Hello, welcome to Yoga for Boomers and Beyond. I'm your host and instructor, Nancy Boyle. In today's program, we'll be touching on a bit on each of the areas of the body that we've focused on in previous episodes, kind of like a time capsule, if you will. Before we begin, though, let's review what we've done to date. Episode one focused on joint mobility, where we moved all of our joints and got synovial fluid flowing freely in those places. Episode two worked on improving posture to relieve neck tension and upper back pain and to strengthen the muscles that kept us upright and strong. Episode three focused on lower back issues. We stretched and strengthened the lower back. Episode four focused all about hips. So we brought some mobility into the hips and we also worked on strengthening the muscles around the hips to make the hips function well. Episode five was all about, <clears throat> excuse me, all about balance. And we did a lot of work on the feet and the ankles, some yummy uh, massaging of the feet, getting them prepared for balanced postures. In episode six, we did standing postures to strengthen bones and muscles that support those bones and standing postures. And episode seven was all about the essential movements of the spine. We did axial extension and we did some lateral movements. We flexed and extended the spine and we rotated it. So we moved it in all the seven directions that keep it healthy and flexible. I encourage you to revisit those previous episodes at your leisure to work on any of the areas that are of particular interest for you. But today it's time to put it all together in a standing sequence. So after a brief seated centering, we'll move to a standing sequence touching a bit on all that we did in the seven previous episodes, a kind of all-in-one practice. So let's get started. So let's begin with a nice centering breath. Find a nice tall spine with the crown of the head and the sternum lifted. Roll your shoulders up and back and let them just melt away from your ears. As you draw the belly slightly in, close your eyes and begin to breathe in and out through your nose. So as we allow ourselves to center our attention on the breath, it allows us to connect mind and body and breath together, kind of collecting ourselves and allowing ourselves to be here and fully present for the practice. So let the breath flow freely, filling you up from the belly into the low ribs, up into the top of the lungs. And allow the breath to spill over into a nice relaxing, soothing exhale, drawing the navel in towards the spine as you complete your exhale. And allow the cycle to just repeat itself, filling you up from belly to ribs to chest, feeling the expansion and the nice relaxed and soothing exhale as the breath leaves through the nose. Two more rounds with the eyes closed, letting yourself expand the breath just a little bit more with each breath in. Allowing the mind to quiet. So if thoughts of things to come later in the day start creeping in, just see if you can allow them to move out for just a little while. And then opening your eyes, bringing your hands down by your sides, we'll add a little movement. So filling up as we bring the arms out to the sides and up overhead. And on your exhale, the palms turn away and the arms float out and down. We'll do three more of these. Inhale, the arms sweep out and up. Nice full breath in. And then on your exhale, the breath empties as the arms reach out to the side and down. Two more. Inhale, the arms out to the side and up. And exhale. Arms reach out and float down. Finding our way to standing, our, our practice will be in a standing mode today. So we're going to find our way into standing. Bring the chair over to the side of your mat. If you have a mat, you might, you might not. And bring yourself to the side of the chair. We're going to begin in this standing posture in Tadasana. So your feet are rooted into the ground, outer edges of the feet parallel to each other, toes facing straight ahead. Belly drawn slightly in and the crown of the head lifted. Roll the shoulders up and back and settle the shoulders away from the ears. 
And we're going to begin to lubricate all the joints in the body, beginning with the neck. So let's begin with a gaze over our right shoulder, keeping the chin parallel to the ground and the shoulders relaxed. And then coming through center and bringing the gaze over to the other side. We'll do one more in each direction, coming into center and then bringing our gaze over to the right. And then coming through center and bringing the gaze over to the left. Coming back to center, drawing a circle as if you have a crayon on the end of your nose and you're drawing those circles in front of you. So you're not really compressing the back of the neck by lifting the chin too much. You're just circulating the head by drawing circles with your nose right in front of you. Switching directions. So we're flossing the cervical spine here. You might even feel some crunchiness, some rice crispy crackling, and that's okay. Coming to stillness. We'll do some shoulder circles. So we're gonna roll the shoulders up and back, maybe about six or seven in the backwards direction. The arms can come along for the ride and then bringing those circles in a forward direction. So we're using the muscles in our back, warming up the muscles in our back around our shoulder blades, those rhomboid muscles. And then we're going to work on warming up the hips. So bring your feet as wide as your hips and begin to hula hoop the hips. So we're making big circles with the hips. Six or seven in one direction big circles keeping the upper body relatively quiet and just letting the hips circulate switching directions after six or seven of these in one direction getting those hips nice and warmed up and then coming to stillness bring your feet together and we're going to warm up the uh, knees. So bring your hands down to your thighs and we're simply going to make circles with our knees rolling around the outer edges of our feet. Feet stay on the mat but you're rolling to the outer edges so the weight is moving to the front and the sides and the back. Switching directions when you're ready so just letting those circles move in the opposite direction. And then bringing yourself all the way up, we'll move to our wrists. So bringing your forearms together, interlace your fingers and begin to make some figure eights. Making figure eights with the wrists, lubricating the wrists. Every time we bring this motion into our joints, we bring synovial fluid into the wrists. And then unlace your fingers and lace them the kind of awkward way. So just bring the fingers over one. So now they're interlaced, forearms are together, make those figure eights again, maybe in the opposite direction, just lubricating those wrists. And then bringing your hands down by your sides, we are going to work on the ankle. So you can have the chair nearby because there's a little bit of balance involved with this. So we're going to take our right foot behind us and rest our um, self on the tops of those toes on the right foot. And then we're going to roll over those toes making circles. So we're lubricating the ankles here. And if you want to play with your balance, you can do it without holding the chair, but holding the chair is fine. Switching directions. So it's kind of like a little lasso action from the hip down through the knee as you roll over the toes, circling the ankles. And then bringing that foot to stillness, we're going to take the left foot back. So you're sitting on the toes of that foot, foot is behind you, and you're just going to start rolling over the toes. So this is a nice lubricant for the toes as well. We're working the joints in the toes and the ankle as we just lasso that leg, let it move in nice, loose, relaxed circles, switching directions. and then bringing that foot down to meet the other one. We're going to do a um, 
standing cat and cow. We've done it in seated posture as we've undulated the spine. So to do it standing, we're going to take a little bend in the knees, bring our hands down to our thighs. Then we're going to turn the tailbone in and round the back. And then we're going to turn the tailbone out and lift the heart. So we're going to wave a little roundness into the back, shoulders come forward, and then we're going to move in the opposite direction. So we're just cat and cowing, if you will, back and forth. A nice undulation of the spine, getting that spinal fluid to flow nice and freely. And then coming to standing, we're going to bring a little lateral movement into the spine as we bring the arms up overhead. And as if you're holding a, a beach ball or a volleyball between your hands, keep your hands about that distance apart. Take a nice breath in and on your exhale, take a lean to your left. So as you lean to your left, keep the weight evenly distributed in both legs. So try not to bring all the weight into your left leg. Keep some in your right so you're rooting down through the legs. And then take that left hand and just glide it down the left leg. So maybe you go a little deeper, maybe you don't. <laughs> See how it feels in your body. So you don't want to be straining as you do this. You want to be in a position where you can sustain the pose for a few breaths without um, causing any strain or stress in the body. So if you found that you've gone too far, just back out a little bit. If you find you have a little more space to move, go a little deeper. But it's about finding in your own body that place where you can sustain comfortably for several breaths. And that's where the space is going to be created in the body. Inhale the arms up overhead. Get that beach ball in your hands once again. Then take a little lean to the other side. So we're leaning here, stretching the ribs on the left side. And then take that right hand, glide it down that right leg. The weight's evenly distributed in both legs here as you reach that top arm to the opposite side. The left hip can move out to the side slightly, that's okay. Find that sustainable posture, that the depth of the posture that works for you to hold comfortably for a few breaths. A little bit of effort, but, but a little bit of ease at the same time. So we're opening up the intercostal muscles between the ribs, that makes more space for the lungs makes more space for the breath to fill us up. And then coming back up, we're going to do some breathing. And we're going to bring some movement into that breath. So we're going to stand nice and tall, bring the arms down by your sides. And as you inhale, bring the arms forward and up. As you exhale, let them come forward and down. Keep extending the spine long, crown of the head reaches. Inhale, the arms move forward and up. And exhale, they move forward and down. That was two, we're gonna do five. So on your inhale, forward and up. Arms are reaching energetically, coming forward and down. And two more as we reach, inhale, forward and up. And then forward and down. One last one as we bring the arms forward and up and then bring them forward and down. We're going to bring them out to the side now as we breathe. So I'm just gonna move a little so my arm can come out to the side. On the inhale, the palms will turn out and the arms will float up as we breathe in. And on your exhale, palms turn away and the arms float out and down. Breathing and moving with our breath. Inhale up and exhale out to the sides and down. Three more, inhale, out and up. And exhale, reach to the sides and down. Two more, inhale, out and up. And exhale, down. Last one, inhale, the arms reach out and up. Such simple movements, but very powerful movements. Inhale to the side and down. We're opening up the side ribs. We're expanding the breath. So now we're going to do those breaths with the arms sweeping to the side and up. And as we inhale, we're going to come onto the ball of our feet, lift our heels. So there's a little bit of balance that we're working on here. So on your inhale, the arms sweep out to the side and you lift the heels. And then as you exhale, 
come down. I'm going to bring my feet a little wider apart so I have more stability. So find a nice stable place for your feet. Inhale. As you inhale and reach up, the heels come off the ground. I'm a little wobbly today. Exhale out to the sides and down. Find a little dristy that you can look at that keeps you focused. Inhale, the arms sweep out to the side and the heels lift. You don't have to come super high, just get the weight into the ball. And then exhale, lowering down. One last one as we inhale and come onto the balls of the feet. And exhale, coming down. Beautiful. From here, we're going to inhale the arms up overhead, and on the exhale, we're going to sink into Utkatasana, a nice strengthening pose for the legs. So as you look down with your knees bent, you should be able to see your toes. And if you can't, draw the hips back slightly so that you can. If your arms are not comfortable and your shoulders aren't comfortable with your arms up high, you can reach them out forward. Perfectly fine to do that. On your inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, the arms down. Down. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the side, and on your exhale, we'll sink into that Utkatasana again. So the feet are rooting, and again, the arms can be reaching out or they can be up. Legs are working really hard here. On your inhale, come up, and on your exhale, lower. So we're strengthening the muscles, strengthening the bones. Here we go again. Inhale up, and exhale, sink. Nice breath in here, and on your exhale, bring your hands to your heart. So we're going to take a little twist in this pose. So lengthen the spine, let the heart reach forward and the tailbone reach back. And on your exhale, let your left shoulder turn down and your right shoulder turn up. The knees should stay parallel to each other as you come into this twist. And you should be able to breathe nice and freely, so you don't want to be restricted in your breath. Hands stay right at the heart. And the gaze can go down to the floor, or it can look down at your hands. You want the breath to be nice and full, so we're taking that rotation of the spine here. Inhale back to center, bring the arms up overhead, and exhale the arms down by your sides. We'll do that again on the other side. Inhale the arms sweep up, and exhale sink into Utkatasana, arms up or forward. Take your hands to your heart, lengthen your spine, reach the heart away from the tailbone. And on your exhale, come into that twist. So we're going to let the right shoulder turn down, the left shoulder turn up, hands stay right at the heart. And the reason that we want to keep the hands at the heart is sometimes we do this and we think we're twisting, but we're really not twisting at all. Feels like we're twisting, but it's not a twist. So we want to keep those hands at the heart so we can let that rotation happen through the ribs. Keep the breath full. Keep rooting down through the legs. The legs might be a little tired or burny right now. Keep it up. You're doing great. Inhale, come through center. Come all the way up. And exhale, the arms by your sides. Great job. So we're working all of the things we've worked on through the first seven sessions. So we're going to come into balance. Balance posture today is going to be tree. And you can have the chair nearby for support if you need it. You can hold on to the chair or even touching the chair sometimes gives you a, a sense of more balance. And even holding the chair is, is OK because you're still going to be working the muscles and the brain that help you stay nice and upright. So bring your weight into your right leg. Come on to the toes of your left foot. Turn the knee out. Your hands can be at your heart, or you can have a hand on the chair. Find a drishti in front of you, that space on the floor, that spot that is your focus point. And you can stay here with your toes on the ground, kick standing, or you can bring that foot up to your shin. And you can stay with your hands at your heart, pressing your palms and your fingers together. Or you might think about coming into a bigger tree. <laughs> so letting the arms float up, keeping that attention on that dristy. And you're going to wobble a little. Things are going to be adjusting to keep you upright. And that's OK. Allow the breath to flow freely so you have some suppleness. And if 
not holding the chair isn't right for you, you might just put a finger on the chair, a couple of fingers on the chair, just to give you a sense of stability, and then play with loosening the grip. Bring your hands to your heart. If they're floating up, bring your knee forward and bring that foot down and just pause with your eyes closed for a moment and see how things feel. So you might feel different on one side that, uh, versus the other, the side that we just worked so hard in balance. And allow the body to readjust. And we'll do it all on its own. And then we'll move to the other side. So bring your weight into your left foot. Come on to the ball of the right foot. Turn the knee out and bring the a uh, heel to the ankle. Toes can rest on the floor. Find that dristy, that point on the floor that doesn't move. Draw the belly in, lengthen the spine up. Find your breath. And then you might play with bringing the foot up. Pressing the foot against the shin is a nice way to find some stability. Maybe you grow your tree, or maybe you loosen the grip on the chair if you're touching the chair. Try to stay relaxed so that you can be supple. You know how trees just move with the breeze. So you want to have a little bit of ability to adjust. If you stiffen up, get really stiff, that's when you can topple. Bring the hands back to the heart, turn the knee forward, and step that foot down. Nice job. So we're going to come into some simple sun salutations, and you might want the chair nearby. I'm going to turn the chair so that I can use the chair and show you how you can use it if you like. So we're going to stand nice and tall into dust, and I roll the shoulders up and back. On the inhale, sweep the arms up overhead, and on the exhale, fold forward. So you may only reach the chair, and that's fine. You might let the head turn down. You might even bring your hands down to your ankles or to the floor. Knees can stay slightly bent. On your inhale, find a flat back. So bring your hands to your shins or maybe to the chair. Lengthen the spine forward. Little arch in the low back. And on your exhale, fold back down. Inhale, bending into the chair, sweep, or into the knees, sweep the arms wide, come all the way up. And exhale your hands to your heart. So we'll do that two more times. Inhale, sweep up. And exhale, fold. So you have choices to stop at the chair or come all the way down. Inhale to a long spine, hands to shins or chair. And exhale, fold. Inhale, little bend in the knees as you sweep the arms wide, come all the way up, and exhale the hands to the heart. One more time, inhale, sweep out to the sides and up, and exhale, fold. Inhale to that long spine, lift and lengthen, and on your exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms wide, come all the way up, and exhale the hands to your heart. Great job. So we're going to come onto the long side of your mat with your feet about as wide as your shoulders, maybe a little wider. And we're going to come into warrior two. So turn that right foot out so that the heel of that right foot intercepts the arch of the left foot. And then bend into that right foot. And what happens sometimes is this hip tends to fall down, so we want to bring the pelvis to neutral, lifting the right side of the pelvis up so that we have this nice level saucer here. And from here, bring your arms out to the sides, gaze over the middle right finger. So this is warrior two, soften the shoulders, feeling the rooting down of the legs. So we're using the weight of our body to strengthen the bones in our legs. And then we're going to work on our um, posture by working on the muscles in the back while we're here. So take your arms into cactus and press the elbows and the forearms back. Open up the heart. On your exhale, bring your forearms together. And on your inhale, open. Exhale, close. And inhale, open. Exhale, close. And inhale, open. Exhale, back to closed. And then inhale to open. Nice. 
Extend the arms, look over the middle right finger. And then we're going to come into Gentle Warrior, a little relief for that front leg. So on the inhale, turn the palms up, arms overhead, front leg straightens. And on your exhale, sink back. Inhale to Gentle Warrior. And exhale back to Warrior. Inhale to Gentle. And exhale. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Nice job. Bring your hands to your hips, straighten that front leg, turn the toes forward, and we'll move to the other side. So the left toes will turn out, the heel in line with the arch of the back foot, bending into that front leg. So as you bend into the front leg, level the pelvis, and don't let the knee go past the ankle. So you want it over the ankle or behind it, depending upon how your legs are working today. So you might want a gentler warrior, so you might bring your feet a little closer together, less bend in the knee. So you're the judge of how intense you want this to be. Bring your arms out to the sides. Gaze over the middle finger. Soften the shoulders down and let energy move right through the back body from the pinky to pinky. And then we're going to do something for the back body again. We're going to do the, um, your traps will love this movement, the YTWL. So make fists and turn your palms up. Bring your arms overhead so your thumbs like your hitchhikers are moving back. So at the same time we're doing the upper body, we're strengthening the lower body. So we're doing double duty here. So press the Thumbs back, we're in the shape of a Y. And then we're gonna come into a T, so we're gonna bring the arms out to the sides. We'll look like a T, our torso is the line and then the crossing line is our arms. Press those thumbs back. And then come into a W by dropping the elbows, having the upper arms against the ribs and the forearms at an angle, so we look like Ws. And then coming into a L. So we're just lowering those forearms, keeping the upper arms against the ribs as best you can, and pressing those thumbs back. So we're really strengthening the muscles in the back while we're strengthening the legs at the same time. And then bring the hands to the hips, straighten the front leg, nice. Turn the toes forward, and we're going to come into a forward fold. So the toes can be slightly pigeon-toed. And if it's, if it's something that you'd like a chair in front of you so that you can come down to the chair, feel free to do that. I'm gonna come all the way down. My toes are slightly pigeon-toed and my heart is lifted. I'm going to take a nice breath in and exhale, I'm going to fold so I'm parallel to the floor. And this is where you may want to have the chair in front of you. You might even stack your arms and rest your head there. That might be enough of a forward fold for you, and that's fine. But if you're able to come further, just glide your hands down to your ankles and kind of just pour your torso down towards the floor. Nice forward fold here. And again, if doing this with the chair so that you're not quite so low is better for you, please feel free to do that. So do what feels right for you, especially your low back. This can be intense on your low back and a way to protect that low back is to keep the navel drawn in towards the spine. Maybe have a little bend in your knees. And once you find the place where you can be comfortable just hanging out, see if you can let all the tension pour down out of the shoulders and arms and head and neck. Little shake of the head. Forward folds are wonderful ways to release tension. You can do this sitting in a chair as well with the legs wide and the torso folded between the legs. And then to come up, you want to really engage your core, so draw your navel in. Walk your hands up your legs as you lengthen the spine. So not rounding, but lengthening forward, and then press yourself up to standing. Great job. A lot of work today. Bring your feet together. Give yourself a pat on the back. And then we're going to come down to seated. So find your chair, and we'll do 
two rounds of seated sun salutations just to kind of unwind before we come into our final relaxation of Shavasana. So we've worked pretty hard today. We've worked lengthening the spine. We've rotated it. We've moved it laterally. We've undulated it, flexed it, and extended it. So we've done all those wonderful movements for the spine. We've strengthened our legs and the bones in our legs. We've strengthened the muscles in our back. And we've taken a nice calm forward fold. So we deserve a little rest. But first, let's come into some nice, relaxing, seated sun salutations. There'll be a breeze now that we've done them standing. So sit nice and tall, arms down by your sides. Inhale, the arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, come to cactus, and inhale, lean slightly forward. Bring your hands to your thighs, glide your hands towards your knees, and then let them just dribble down towards your ankles as the head turns down. Relax all the muscles. Inhale, lift and lengthen your spine. Find that nice long spine, and on your exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms wide. Use that core strength to come all the way up with a nice straight spine, arms overhead, and then down to the heart and back by your sides one more round and then we can rest. Inhale the arms out to the sides and up and exhale to cactus. Inhale, lean halfway and exhale, hands glide down across the thighs, over the knees, down to the ankles as you just pour the torso and the crown of the head down. Inhale to a nice long spine, lift and lengthen and on your exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms wide, bring yourself all the way up, reach to the ceiling, exhale your hands to your heart. Fabulous job. A whole body workout here. So let's rest and let everything digest. So find a nice comfortable place in your chair. So you might sit back in your chair, extend your legs long, put a little pillow behind you. And if you're able to get down on the floor, I encourage you to get down on your mat or on the floor if you don't have a mat and just kind of lay yourself out long. And if you're in the chair, just extend long. Support your back, rest your hands on your lap. Relax the shoulders, let the chin come down towards the chest. And close your eyes. And we'll come into a brief resting posture of Shavasana here. So as you allow all the muscles in the back of the body to relax and allow you to sink into the sport behind the body, either on the floor or on the chair. Let the shoulders and the arms and the hands and the fingers relax. The belly soften. And the heart space and the lungs relax. So the muscles melt away from the bones. All the fluids in the body flow freely as you surrender the physical body to, to gravity and the support behind the body. Allow your awareness to move inward and upward towards your third eye, that space between your eyebrows. So we call that in yoga the seat of our intuition. It's where our beautiful light shines, that light that's unique to us. So you might rest with a little imagining of that light as the flame of a candle glowing brightly, shedding a warm light casting its warmth all over your body. So just basking in the glow of that warm flame of the candle, allowing it to give you a sense of peace and relaxation as the body digests the movement of the practice. Letting everything stay quiet. And when you're ready to come out of this resting posture, and it doesn't have to be right this minute, but in your own time, you might find some deeper awareness of your breath as you fill up a little more fully with each successive breath. Allow the expansiveness of the inhale to fill you up and the relaxing effect of the exhale to quiet things down. And then find some movement in the physical body, wiggling the fingers and toes perhaps, circling the wrists and the ankles. 
Coming back up to seated, take your arms up overhead, extend your legs. So if you're lying on the mat or the floor, just take a nice full body stretch. If you're sitting in the chair, really extend your legs, your arms, take a breath in and sigh it out. Ah, open your eyes to take in the room, going about your day feeling a little calmer, a little stronger, a little bit more flexible. And then we'll say goodbye until next time. So until next time, namaste. Thanks so much for practicing with me today. If you know of someone who might benefit from this practice, I hope you'll share it with them by hitting the share button below. A link to this video and other information about the benefits of practicing yoga can be found on my Facebook page. And that address and that link is shown right below. I encourage you to share your feedback as well, so tell me what areas of the body I could focus on that would be helpful to you. I hope you'll join me next time. Until then, Namaste.